Cool. So thanks for coming on to the live stream. Yeah, thank and, you for um, me. As I shared with you, like my goal with eLive Freedom is to connect with like-minded people and give people information to allow them to wake up and live their life fully. Because I feel like there's a lot of people that uh, go through life and they think everything's fine. And it's kind of like what they don't know, they don't know. True. And I just got back from a big retreat in Mount Shasta where I was for about eight days uh, with a, a friend and a fellow healer. His name's Eric Rains. And we did a chi energy and implant removals. And we did Qigong. We did lymphatic drainage. Mm -hmm. We did meditation. We did golden frequency energy, like moving golden light and basically clearing things. And then we even, we even did some energy healing and work on other people. Mm -hmm which like was very shocking because a lot of times we're so distracted by the external world that we never pay attention to anything that we feel or any kind of vibes or intuition because we're so distracted by everything on the outside. So I came back and um, coming back to LA, everything was kind of loud and clear after being in Mount Shasta in nature and in the river and waterfalls and all the chaos not being there and then coming back to LA, I'm like, whoa, I think I better go back to Mount Shasta. <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that's where I was about, uh, about a week and a half ago. And, um, I wanted to have you on. I spoke with you and, um, it sounds like you help a lot of people with intuition, guidance in life and channeling wisdom and knowledge that perhaps, helps people be on a better path with themselves and uh, connect to their, their true self as opposed to perhaps some of the patterns that they fall into. So tell us a little bit about yourself, like how you got started with your work and um, you know, what's your passion when it comes to healing and connecting with people? Wow. Um... So awesome on all of that that you got to experience, you know? Um, yeah. I know what it's like to unplug, you know? <laughs> you know? I'm unleashing the, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the matrix, right? Right, it absolutely yeah. is. And, um, well, let's see. So all of that is kind of the way that I try to live. I mean, we're, I'm still in it too, but... Yeah. Um, to expand my consciousness all the time is where I'm focused, I would say a lot of the time, but I also know we're playing the game too. So um, for me, uh, my personal experience is I was playing the game to a certain extent for a really long time and then had a, like kind of just some personal life shifts that changed my perspective and, and some People, even I called that, especially at, at a certain point, called it an awakening. And now uh, the, the term awakening is really uh, taken over, almost in mainstream. I don't know if that's fully right. over, but I mean, I think it's pretty broad worldwide that there's a collective consciousness of people that are waking up and the world reflects that. I had that experience, but I was always sort of on a spiritual path, too even in my own distract in, in, in my own distraction ways, even, even when I was doing my own patterns and my own, you know, Oh, the, the ego life says to do this and to be this and to look like this and to, and I still sure I still have some of that definitely, but we, um, I, I shifted. Um, my father died suddenly and it was the first time that I um, had any family death and my, um, he just died suddenly. He was in a car crash head on and he was dead. And that was the one particular, but there were many after that, um, life altering, perspective changing, no longer seeing the feeling in the world the same way, partly because I went into shock um, and, and, and subsequently noticed and began to notice that my own intuition, I wouldn't even say intuition, my own psychic awareness expanded. It just blew up. And I started to have extreme experiences. Um, but I was always very, very intuitive. I was always aware of sort of the mystical and the magical. My life was a um, kind of like a seeker for a long time. I, um, I kind of grew up that way. And uh, 
So when that happened, I started, I would say, on a really strong curve towards um, trying to handle this psychic energy that was happening to me. And we'll call it psychic, but that's just, that's just the way we label it now. Yeah. Um, you know, I was having a lot of supernatural phenomena and um, experiencing sort of what I now kind of say is a, uh, the fabric of reality started to shift. And, you know, I think all of the movies and all of the things that contribute to this kind of awareness is helpful because I think a lot of people are having these kinds of experiences a lot. Right. Um, you know, my book is pretty much going to be called No, You're Not Crazy because <laughs> something like that, because everyone that I work with, when I work with people at a, at a level for their own intuition expansion, for their own psychic awareness, to understand their own clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, all of the clairs, people think, oh my God, wait a minute, you're saying that I'm not crazy if all of these things were happening or some of these things were happening or I'm seeing this or I'm feeling this or I'm knowing this and this is happening. And so I'm like, I'm like anchoring it for people a lot of the time about what it is that these things are in our seemingly solid reality, which it's really not, which a lot of us are starting to begin to understand. So, um, you know, in the last, I would say, 10, uh, 12, 15 years. Uh, everything you described about your experience in Shasta is the way that I live all the time. Yeah. And, um, and I feel like I pop in and out of, of, you know, straddling the line of being in this world and being in different dimensional frequencies. And that's just another way to describe it um, because it's all simultaneously happening. And some, for some people, that's just too much to take. That's just too much to think about. We don't really know how with the mind that is the thinker that's trying to organize everything. We don't really know how to make sense of nonlinear experience. So we are in a, uh, you know, a, a heavy as, as a fire, the ones that I channel say a heavily focused experience. So we're so heavily focused. The, the mind is doing this to keep us in this, this, this thing that we're experiencing called life. And, uh, we have to play by those rules and for us to step outside of them. Whoa. It sometimes it takes some time and it takes some anchoring. It takes some undoing and unraveling of our own sets of constructs of belief that have tethered us to the reality that we've been in. So, um, I try to, and I do hold this like a uh, place with people to undo that and to um, step into the other and to also expand their own. So um, that's what I do now. Um, and that has been the journey, like I said, in the last 10 to 15 years. And um, my clairvoyance became very, very strong after that. I went through a really, uh, a number of really dark nights of the soul. I also had a pretty, very strong, pro profound Kundalini awakening um, and spiritual awakening overall. Um, and then what I like to say, especially now, because so many people talk about this topic all the time, we didn't have Facebook doing the same things as it does today, 10 years ago. So it's just amplified and it's just grown so much. But what I, I really like to remind myself even of and, and people I talk to is that you don't just have one radical awakening and and then you're done uh, awakening or enlightenment or consciousness expansion whatever you want to call it samadhi any of it is a progression it is a, it's a cumulative we keep doing it we're not in just one because my feeling is this if you have massive radical awakening you're probably going to leave your body so i know that i've had successive different times different periods of experience where I've just woke up and turned and like, and I have had some that were so difficult to navigate. Like, how do I hang on in this reality and still function raising kids and living the life that we're here playing a part of? How do I do that and still navigate this big, huge piece that's rocked that reality, that part of the matrix for me. Yes. So, um, so I, I try with my own living experience, um, to teach and offer and share and guide and nudge all the ways to being in that. And I don't mean that there's an end goal because really I don't feel that right. I, I'm not trying to get anybody to an end goal. Right. I'm, 
I'm, I'm assisting people on lots of different levels. Me personally, Grace, with everything I've lived and gone through, me as Grace, <laughs> I don't like to talk about my third person self, but like right. me as the tools in my toolbox. I've got lots and lots and lots and lots of tools. So like what you said about Qigong and energy healing. And I, I mean, I, I bring a lot of these kinds of things. Hypnotherapy, I do channeling. I am a medium. There's everything. So I, 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 I got a lot going on that I, that I do offer and can offer when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, when I do groups, when I teach workshops, retreats. So those are the things I'm doing now. Yeah. And what kind of people, um, what kind of people do you find reach out to you and what's, what's your passion when it comes to like a certain kind of client or um, how do people find you? I mean, do they just, is it word of mouth? You know, it, uh, the Did I go, hey, I have to call Grace Kavanaugh. I got <laughs> Some of them do. A lot of people do get referred to me. Um, now that we have the internet the way it is, now that I, you know, back in the day, I had this funky little website and, you know, but that was even a couple of years after I started doing group channelings. The group experience is kind of what happened first. And then I started doing one-on-ones and then I got a a funky website and you know I only got a better website just about a year ago so like right. um, you know I I've uh, seen some pretty scary websites like it's so funny because uh, my background's like digital marketing and internet marketing and a lot of times I would go to like psychics and clairvoyance and yeah. I swear like their website was definitely not one of their strengths yes most of them we're I like, know. I'm like, hey, can you let me help you? Right. Can you help me? So well, I did mine in my in the beginning, and it wasn't that bad because I know the yeah, kind of good. Talk about. Good. Well, the one I have now is I like that too, and um, yeah. it's better than the one before. So that's how it keeps going, right? Right. And um, so people find me through word of mouth a lot. I've I've been working with people for many many years. I mean, five, eight years. Some people. So. Um, Sometimes this is just an ongoing process of life, you know, and I'm a, a go-to person. And then a lot of people refer me. A lot of people find me through YouTube now and videos and interviews and things like that. Um, I feel like I kind of hid out, if I'm honest. I kind of, I kind of hid for a while. I still, I don't know that I'm hiding now. I mean, I'm about to be in some documentary. I mean, I, there's things that are happening and, um, and, but those, those parts of the walk for me have been, uh, how should I say that, sort of slow on the one hand as I continue, continue to adjust to all of this myself, but also to really ask myself what I want to do and how I want to live my life and, um, you know, how, how, I'm, how I feel pulled to do things is really a, an important part for me. Um, and... What else do you ask me something else that was good about you? Said? Like specific clients that. Oh, that was good. Work yeah, with. No. Like, do you work with people that don't have experience? Do you work with other intuitives? I like that question because I don't often get asked that question. Um, you're going to, this is interesting. I work with everybody. I work with people who are working in high profile CEO jobs in big, big corporations who are having spiritual experiences and or massive amounts of healing going on in their life and spiritual stuff is, com is coming in and they are seeking to find some help or answers. I, I do a mentorship program. So my, my mentorship is really, is, is a place, is a container where that's all the stuff that I've sort of described, which I really haven't hit on everything, but can be really, I can really help someone and we can do some deep, work and whatever that means for someone and yeah. some people are um are working mediums clairvoyance some people are uh just curious some people are having actual experiences like i said and so they're keeping their day job but they're having full-on like we would call it paranormal experiences or they're actually just really wanting the spiritual and the healing in their life Right. And so um, I work with everybody on, I mean, I work with men who are, and women. So sometimes people think, oh, you know, you're just only working with women. Not true. And I also, kind of contrary to what a lot of other people are doing out there, which is not a judgment at all. I think there's everything that we need, but I don't, I, so far, I haven't like 
I don't talk about my clients. I don't like post their stuff. I don't talk a lot of stories about my clients um, for, for marketing or otherwise. I, I really take it as a sacred work. Now, that's not a judgment because there may be a time in the future where, you know, some of my clients may do testimonials and things like that or, right. or not care if I tell a story or be a part of the book or, you know, but um, I, I don't know. I've just been, and it's not a short, I've, I, this for me in some ways, this is almost like, um, yeah, this is a nine, 10 year process that I've been working and doing this work. And so it's not new, it's, and I'm, and, um, but for me, I, I just feel very, very directly guided. I've always known on some level, I had visions as a child, and then I started having visions after my dad de- died, and I had to figure out how to navigate those visions. And one of the visions I had was kind of of this woman in the future. I saw her in the clouds. I was eight years old. I was climbing a tree, and I saw this woman in, the, in these clouds, and it was like literally like a materialization of a woman, like a, like a hologram, right, like a, or like a movie projector shining on the clouds. And I saw this woman and she was sitting there and she looked very peaceful and she seemed to have her eyes closed. I wasn't sure. And she was in front of a bunch of people. And I remember she was wearing white, I think. And um, she had this curly hair. And I remember that vision very, very prominently in at that eight year old little girl of me. And it felt energetically connected and familiar. Then I forgot about it till I was in my early 40s. And I was in the same kind of position doing that thing. It was a vision of myself. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. When did your father pass away? Well, um, my father uh, passed in um, 2005. Oh, okay, cool. And in the last five years, um, since 2012, which to me has been some of the most intense years of my life, actually, um, all of my family overall has died. Uh, All my primary primary people who I've lived with, my stepdad, my grandmother, my uncle, who is like my brother, and my mother um, as well. So I've kind of dealt with a lot of loss and um, or in this world, but um, kind of adjusting to how that is on a spiritual level. Because if I, which I do know that there is no death, I feel that, I've seen that, I've experienced that, I've heard that, I get, I get that. And then to still, as we do, like I said before, play in this form, experience the feelings of what that is, the grief, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, But, you know, navigating, uh, channeling and visions and uh, hearing celestial music that you've never heard in the world, in your house, you know, having beings visit you at night and you're like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in a dream. I can feel my bed. I, I wake myself up to have those kinds of experiences over a, many years. Uh, <laughs> for me, it just became, how do I live with this? And what do I do with this? And what does it mean? And how am I guided to, you know, yeah. serve, I guess, through this. Channel, um, you had talked to me about, like being a medium and channeling a bunch of spirits. Um, well, yeah, I mean, we call, we call them. When did that open up for you? I know you told me that you met um, you met some people that actually helped you uh, get more in touch with that. Maybe you can share a little bit about that and how that benefits okay. people that work with you. So yeah, um, I was doing a lot of meditating um, at a certain point with all of this because I was having a ton of anxiety about the fact that my world was being kind of pulled out. You know, my, my container of the constructs of my belief system were right. starting to crumble and because I was seeing dead people and I was experiencing visitations and I was the spirit world and the fabric of my reality was shifting. So I didn't know my, my nervous system started to go, Oh, how can I deal with all of this and raise two kids and blah, 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 blah. So I started meditating to try to calm my mind and center. And that's the place where I started to recognize over time, there was a presence with me. And over time I got a little more comfortable, a little more comfortable. And then I started to recognize that they were speaking to me. I thought at first I, I didn't understand how to navigate that, but I recognized it was a different 
consciousness than my own voice inside. Yep. And then um, they basically at some point said they, they would like to speak. And I just was like, whatever. I mean, yeah, like what am I supposed to do? I literally tell the story that like I said out loud in the living room, sitting in front of my candle in the Buddha <laughs> saying, what am I supposed to do? Open my mouth and just, you know, let it all fall out. And, and I kind of thought on some level, well, God, if you guys want to, if you, whatever you are, which then I had to learn how to navigate that kind of agreement and consciousness, like you don't want any old thing coming around and talking to you and like, and you know, having the conversation. So I had to learn about boundaries, but, um, took a little while. And then, um, they said that, um, basically two people would show up and, uh, they did those a man and a woman friends of mine now um, showed up and they and we had this conversation and I asked them if they would be willing to sit with me while I learned how to hold this energy coming through and speak and it was not pretty it was uncomfortable my ego was going bonkers I did not like this uh, it was really uh, really fast it was really I hated my voice. I would get in the way. I'd pop back in. I'm a, I'm definitely a person as a channeler that steps aside. It's um, very, um, I don't know how to really describe, I try to describe it, but it's it's hard to describe. I just go away. It's kind of like Edgar Cayce. He, he, he just, they call him the sleeping prophet. I don't totally have to lay down and sleep, but right. I, I definitely step off. You, you have to disappear to allow something else to come in. Yeah. And that because I wanted it to be a, a pure channel. And that was the hard work of that first real year of practicing with these friends of mine that we all made this commitment and we did this. And that was the hardest part was because I really, I just, it, it mattered to me that it was authentic or that it, it mattered to me that there was integrity there. And so I did not want to be in the way. I didn't want my egoic filter in the way. So there was a lot of, I mean, I would leave group channelings, public group channelings I do in LA. There'd be people, lots of people there. And then I'd leave and get in the car and start sobbing. And I'd be like, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like why? And then I, months later, I'd do it again. And <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was the process. That was the process. And so, um, yeah, they totally helped me. And then it takes practice for me. It just took a lot of practice and willingness. And, um, and so now I try to teach that with people. Um, I would not say to anyone, even though here's what I was going to say. I do believe that we are all channeling. We all have these antennas and we're all plugged into this consciousness and this collective consciousness. And, right. and we are not separate. Um, some of us make agreements to come in and be these, these ones like me. I'm, I, I made this agreement. It's so crystal clear to me. I've had so many crazy, amazing experiences to confirm that. And, um, and so some people are super ultra wired to be like this and maybe they've been that way and, or are that way simultaneously in other experiences. But, um, and some people have a harder time and want to. And, you know, but there's lots of gifts we all have and plugging into that sort of channel, the different channels that are available to us, we all have, have that ability. And I always say the first place is with intuition and, the, and what intuition encompasses is trust, trusting yourself. So there's a lot of sort of layers kind of merging when we're in a process to discover all of this for ourselves.